So you watch study videos all day, work really hard and try your best, but you're kind of in your flop era. It's actually really frustrating because it's one thing to be lazy and score badly, but to try our best and fail? Now that hurts. This is a problem that I actually struggled with for so many years, especially since I was a slower learner last time. I just felt like I didn't do anything right. But don't worry besties, I'm here to help you. You guys already know that we don't just talk about problems on this channel, we give solutions. So in this video, I'll be giving you brutally honest advice and tips on how to improve your results when all else fails. The last advice that I'll be giving is a wake up call for every one of you watching this video so stay tuned because I think it's very important for you to hear. Number 1. Not shifting your routine to fit exam environments before your exams. This study tip is especially important if you're addicted to social media. Listen up. About a month before your actual exam, you need to start studying like you're taking the exam already. Step 1. Try to use your phone less and less. Set a timer on your phone. You can start with 30 minutes, but only touch your phone once the timer is up. Keep extending these sessions until you reach the length of your exam. If you're addicted to social media, your attention span is ruined and you need to build that back up before your exam starts again. I remember my first university exam last year, I think it was chemistry. I found it so hard to focus and so tiring, more tiring than usual, to take this exam because my brain just fried so fast and I wish I had built up the stamina beforehand. Step 2. If you'd like to eat a snack or listen to a particular playlist while you're studying, you need to slowly phase that out too. Because you can't do these things during your exam, so you don't want to get used to it. Similarly, do not drink things like coffee or an energy drink right before your exam if you're not used to it. My friend ruined his economics exam because he took a Red Bull before it and he couldn't sit still for his exam and he was shaking like a leaf, so don't do it. Step 3. Do practice exams like it's the real exam. I know it's annoying, but here's how to do it properly. Do your entire past year paper in one color. When the timer runs out, do the rest of the paper in another color. You need to try and finish your entire exam paper in one color before exam season arrives. This will train your time management. Number 4, and this is probably the hardest, but if your exams are in the morning, you need to start changing your routine to be that of a morning person and vice versa. Wake up slightly earlier every day and get your body adjusted to being productive so early in your day. You don't want to be sleepy or groggy during exams and not perform to your fullest potential. So those are my 4 rules when it comes to exam preparation. The link to download and print 3 versions of this reminder to stick on your walls or laptop are in the description box below. The only payment is for you to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. By the way, I have a video on how to stop your social media addiction that you can check out after watching this video over here. Next, not having a routine that you enjoy. Hands down, the best thing that I did this year was make a vision board because it inspires me every day. Here's what it looks like. I have a section for every important aspect of my life, each picture representing a goal that I have in mind. You see, you and I have goals. We set goals every year, every week, and every day. The difference is winners have a routine that they enjoy and that's why they don't give up halfway like the rest of us do. There is no point in waking up at 5am and burning yourself out with so much work. You'll never achieve your goals if you don't enjoy the process of getting there. So wake up a little later, do pretty notes or study with your friends even if these aren't 100% effective or productive because it'll help you stay consistent with your routine which is much more important. So the entire process of creating this vision board then setting up a schedule that prioritizes each of the categories has helped me tremendously in inspiring me to reach my goals. I keep it as my wallpaper so I can see it every day. I'll even write a step-by-step -step guide on how you can create one in the description box. If you want, you can make a vision board like mine using Milanote. It's completely free, don't worry. And actually, Milanote is a tool that you can use to organize any of your creative projects. I use it to organize my life. You can organize your academics, thoughts, ideas, plans, and collect inspiration for your project or your life. Here's a checklist I have for my to-do list. It's super customizable. Milanote just gives you a beautiful bird's eye view of everything that's going on. 
You can also collaborate with your friends and create a vision board or revise together. You can also use their built-in templates which is what I did for these boards. Milanote is completely free, there's no time limit and I'll link it in the description box for you to try and you can start your next creative project. Next, not studying your corrections more than your textbook. I first talked about this at the very beginning of my channel but there's 800,000 of you now so let me elaborate further. There is no point in you doing all those exercises and past your papers if you're going to leave them to rot afterwards. And you can do so much better than just reading all the corrections right before your exam, bestie. Here's how to do it. Write all the questions you got wrong in a separate notebook. Write the marking scheme answers too, in point form, to make your life easier. After multiple papers, if you notice that you always get this particular question wrong, star it. If you don't understand the question or what the marking scheme is telling you, then write your confusion down in the notebook. This includes your thought process and everything that you don't understand. Go to your teacher or your lecturer and ask them to explain this to you. You'll then write down their explanation in that notebook. Why? Because you're more likely to get a question right if you understand it. But what a lot of students don't know is that you're also more likely to get a question wrong again and again and again if you don't avoid your wrong understanding. This method of revision is the only reason why I scored this for my A-levels. Next, not preparing for your classes. You have no idea how much this helps until you do it for the first time. But no one needs to do complete notes before their class. If you can, that's great. If you can't, I can't either, so that's no problem. Here's how I do it really quickly. Take a plain piece of paper. Skim through whatever it is that you're studying in class later. Write only the important keywords down. Make sure you leave a few gaps in between. You can also write short points if you want, but the most important thing is that you have a general idea of what's going to be taught in class later on. You can literally do this in 30 minutes, bestie. You have no excuse. Bring your paper to class and build upon the blank spaces. How does class preparation help with your results? From my experience, the class will be far more enjoyable for you because you're not struggling to learn the concept for the first time, but instead you're revising it. On top of that, you're already one revision session ahead of your peers and you can immediately start asking questions to your teacher or lecturer which further enriches your learning experience. You'll be actively listening in class, you'll enjoy the class and you'll thank me. An advertisement might play in the next few seconds, so if you want to support this channel, please do not skip the ads. Thank you! Next, buying too many things then keeping it simple. You have to understand that YouTube, at the end of the day, it's still an entertainment website. Meaning, our jobs as YouTubers is to entertain you. And we do that by using the cutest stationery, the most expensive gadgets, and a lot of things that you actually don't need. And a lot of the time, we make excuses for ourselves and say things like, Oh, because I don't have that pen or that iPad, I can't study as well as them, so there's no point. Remember, we'll never improve if we keep pointing fingers at everything and everyone except for ourselves. So here are some replacements for you. Instead of getting the famous mount liners or expensive Japanese stationery, just use one or two colored pens and you can have the same effect. Or you can just use one pen and make use of different symbols to create your notes. Here is a video of my notes back in secondary school. I scored A plus for this subject and I only use a ruler and a pen. Which just proves that you don't need anything fancy to do well in your exams. For your workspace, you don't need fancy decorations. In fact, having many decorations can actually distract you from your work because there's just too much going on around you for you to focus. Just make sure it's clean, it's organized, and far from distractions. I actually elaborate this further in my video titled How to Focus and Stop Daydreaming that you can check out here after watching this video. If you don't have the luxury of privacy, which I understand Asian homes can get pretty noisy, you can try to wake up earlier than your family to study or put on a pair of headphones and just listen to a particular playlist while you study so that you associate that music with your work. If you want me to make a video on overrated or overhyped things in the StudyTube community, let me know and I can do that. I think that'll be quite fun. The last but most important one, you watch more study videos than actually studying. I know this one's a bit of a wake-up call. 
A lot of us watch study videos because they motivate us. They give us inspiration, the community is really positive, and a lot of the time, the videos are really helpful, like this one, hopefully. But I think it's really important to ask yourself if you're watching this video as a form of motivation or to just escape your reality. Just because you watch a lot of videos on how to score straight A's does not mean that you score straight A's at all. Here's a simple way you can improve your own life instead of just over-consuming content. I'm sure after watching a bunch of study videos, there's definitely one or two tips that you remember. Or let's just say you just watch a bunch of vlogs. Take one aspect of their vlogs that you want to implement in your own life. Is it how clean they are, how they journal every morning, or how early they wake up? Take that one tip or that one habit and try it for one week. Set a daily reminder on your phone or write it in a memo pad so you don't forget it. It'll be even better if you can do it for a month. If nothing improves for you, then change it. It can be really overwhelming consuming all this content because if you're watching 5 videos and each video has 5 study tips, let's be real, you watch more than that every day, that's 25 tips already which is too much to do. So just pick one, try it and implement it into your routine. If you've made it this far, comment down below if you're happy with your results or not. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell and set it to all so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Thank you all for 815,000 subscribers and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye bye!